everything is about the customer experience at this point. It's it's very a key driver. And if you do not have a good customer experience, then your audience will go to a competitor that does. And when you think about luxury brands, they have been in the business of experience forever. Hello and welcome to the 25 Days of Transformation series, where we talk to industry experts and global brands about the highs and lows of digital transformation. We'll learn from real-world business examples, get first-hand industry insights from the digital experts, and we'll take a deep dive into what trends to look out for in the coming months. I'm Tizzy Philp, Strategic Content Lead here at Valtech, and I'm here to guide you through these conversations and to uncover the latest and greatest in digital. In this series, we've been talking about the challenges and opportunities posed by digital transformation, or business transformation, as many have come to refer to it. Whether we're talking to luxury brands, manufacturers, or mobility companies, the concept of transformation goes far beyond just technology. These conversations have highlighted the common threads of organizational change, mindset shifts, and new agile ways of working. This is, of course, an easier pill to swallow for some. Often brands will underestimate the level of change required. These transformations impact each and every part of the business. To talk about the impact and value of business transformation, I'm joined by Lynn Toussignon, VP Strategy and Experience here at Valtech. Working primarily with our luxury clients, Lynn has a wealth of experience in guiding even the most discerning clients through the ups and downs of digital transformation. So Lynn, welcome to the podcast. Thank you for having me. Perhaps we could spend a moment just understanding a little bit more about your role at Valtech and the kind of challenges that clients are typically approaching you with when it comes to achieving a successful transformation. Well, first about my uh, my role, you know, as you mentioned, I lead um, the strategy and experience teams. So this means that it includes uh, customer research, customer experience definition at all touch point, uh, experience on website, uh, content strategy, visual design. So it may it may seem, you know, like uh, a lot of different disciplines, but they are really all embedded in digital transformation. And it's very important that we look at the digital transformation from all those different angles. There is also, you are also asking about, you know, what are the challenges that our clients, you know, why are they coming to us and what are the key, uh, the key challenge? Mm-hmm. I would say that there are two key, very important drivers. One is the need to remain competitive, as simple as that. You know, we have seen so many changes in uh, in technology over four or five last years. Mm-hmm. Or even if we think even more, if we think about 10, then it's just simply drastic. Yeah. You know, we can think about, uh, you know, there are changes in data. Just, I don't know if you if you remember, but... A certain number of years ago, we were talking about big data, and it was a big deal. And then you have cloud, you have online commerce, you have you know people going direct to consumer, you have augmented reality, you have blockchain, you have new regulations. So all of this is putting a lot of pressure on uh, corporation businesses, and and they realize that you know they really need to consider digital transformation if they want to remain competitive. The second key driver would be uh, a focus on customer experience. This is also something that I've changed, you know, uh, in a very important way over the, the, the last few years. And customers are more, more and more demanding. And this is true for both direct to consumer, but also business to business. And and, uh, when our clients come to us, you know, they really want to have a focus on making sure that they offer a good customer experience that is as seamless as possible. I think there can be an assumption that the digital transformation simply requires technology change. That's really not the case, is it? 
<laughs> it is not. Uh, it makes me laugh because still today, I would say that we have most of the, the clients still see it that way. They still think that, oh, we need to change, you know, some, we need some improvement in our technology in order to do a digital transformation. And they don't really see or they underestimate all the implication on, on the business as a whole. And they come to us really with a solution in mind. And they come to us and they say, oh, we, will, we want to redesign our website. We want to offer a better customer experience. And then when we start asking them questions about, you know, what what they envision as a solution, how they came to this, and you know, what are the assumptions behind that? How do they think it will impact the customer experience? And then comes the key question, did you ask your customers? <laughs> and quite often they say no. They are willing to invest a lot of time and a lot of money in a digital transformation based on their own assumption, which are usually driven by operation or what they see of their existing technology. And they are willing to do that without validating with their customer what they exactly want, what they are expecting, and how they can better serve them. So it's often where it starts. And, and then we work with them to, to make them understand that actually they need to take the time to, to do an exercise of, you know, reviewing where they are at, what, what their customers want before moving forward to make sure that whatever roadmap we will put together will be the right one. And we often talk about this need for organizational change or shifting mindsets to enable that to happen. In your experience, why is it so important to change the organization from within? And why do you think that people still assume that if they change the tech, they'll change the business? I would say that, you know, it, we see this, especially in large corporations, it's even more present, meaning that people are working in silos. And, and then if, you know, if the digital transformation is led by technology, well, then the focus is on technology. And it's funny because I recently had a conversation with a colleague and we were making an analogy saying a business is like a car. So bear with me. <laughs> it was saying a car, you need a direction. You need power energy, which would be the employees. You need wheels. That would be the operation. You need a dashboard because you know if there is something wrong with your car or not, you know, and you know, at which speed you are progressing and you need the body and the body would be like your brand it is what people see from outside and depending on the body it will attract a different audience and hopefully the audience that you want to attract so if my analogy may make any sense you know when you start thinking about a business it is the exact same thing where, you know, if you have the right operation or the right technology, it doesn't mean that everything will work perfectly because if it is not aligned with the other division, it will simply at one point, you're going to have some technical challenge or you're going to just crash. And because you will not be able to deliver on, on, on your promise, they really need to to review all those aspects. And I have seen in some cases that it goes as far as bringing the company to even question their own positioning. What is their core message? How do they fit in the ecosystem? And how are they delivering uh, you know, a, a key differentiator that will really help them to compete in the market. And some of them have been doing the same thing for years, and it is still the right thing. Some others discover that they need to change, which is way more than just changing the technology. Does that answer your question? Definitely. I wanted to dive a little bit deeper then into your specific expertise, because you currently specialize with some of our luxury brands and clients. 
What kind of challenges are they facing specifically that other sectors perhaps aren't? You are right. Luxury, luxury brands, it, it is different. What they are facing is different because in a way they are pushed towards digital to offer a customer experience that is digital. But it presents a lot of challenges because it means that if they end up using the same tools that they are that a mass market company is using, how can they be different? How can they still stand as a luxury brand offering something different? One thing that we you know that we need to realize is that Everything is about the customer experience at this point. It's, it's very a key driver. And if you do not have a good customer experience, then your audience will go to a competitor that does. And when you think about luxury brands, they have been in the business of experience forever. It was there. It was, you know, buying a luxury product. Would it be travel? Would it be a car? Would it be fashion, jewelry? It's not only about the quality of the product. It's not only about, you know, the craftsmanship. It is also about the purchase experience itself that is different than buying from a mass market product. And if you transpose and transfer this online, then it becomes very challenging to keep the quality of this purchase experience in a digital format. But some of them are succeeding and some of them are also considering the experience from a different point of view. And what I mean by this is that the customer has been changing. The the, the consumer, especially the luxury consumer, nowadays they will give as much importance to a brand values than to a product if you know if i wear or if i drive uh, a certain brand i want to know what they do you know i want to know what do they do about sustainability or about something else that is important to me because i want to make sure that you know i associate myself as a consumer to a brand that has the same value than me and and i think that it is a way for those luxury brands to bring this as part of the experience, to make this their choice of what they want to endorse in terms of uh, values. They want to bring this much more part of the experience in a digital way. And this can be as much as pure online experience, then it can be also to have a very seamless and digital access to information about what they do in terms of, you know, let's say I'm going to keep the example of sustainability, but this can be information I can access maybe just by pointing my phone to something in a store and I can learn more about it. Maybe it can invite me to participate to something. Maybe it can give me the possibility to join a community. So there are many options there that luxury brands can explore. Well beyond just the website, this is about connected experiences, in-store experiences, omni-channel experiences to to keep that uh, luxury feel and experience going. Yes. And also to think in terms of, you know, I was saying luxury brands, they have been in the uh, in the business of experience for forever. This was has been involving, you know, their sales associate to, to a very high degree. And they can still do this. You know, there is a there is a company that we are working with that um, I cannot mention the name because of confidentiality, but they have been working with us on building a lot of tools, digital tools to support their sales associate to offer a better experience to the end customer. Mm-hmm. So it's, it's also part of the things that, you know, that luxury brands can do really to um, ensure that they keep their differentiators. Yeah, absolutely. And maybe this applies particularly to luxury as well, but perhaps we can assume that if people knew the extent of the change that was required, you know, the organizational change that's required, they'd be less inclined to undertake a transformation. What do you think those businesses should know about 
the added value of transformation and how can they phase the process perhaps to make it more manageable? Yes, it is. I think that, you know, you're touching an important point here. It is scary to do a digital transformation, especially when when they start realizing that it's much more than just technology, uh, that it has a lot of, of impact on, on the business. But at the same time, in some cases, there is no choice. That's the way to survive. You know, just imagine Netflix not moving away from sending new DVDs by mail. Imagine, think about the travel industry where you, we saw all those aggregators coming online and all of a sudden, you know, the, the traditional travel agency, they just simply had to close their doors. And, and I could go on and on and on with those dramatic examples. So I think that in one way, if you really want to remain competitive, it is very important that you keep up with, you know, the evolution and the expectation of customers. Now to answer this, the other part of your question, we always, you know, recommend to our customers to A, as I mentioned before, to take the time to make sure that they are doing in the right direction and to make the necessary research and connection with their customers. But we also stress the importance of working with MVP, so minimal viable product. Meaning that, you know, there are always some low hanging fruits that you can focus on to improve the experience and build on this and measure everything and learn. Because it is not something that you say, we are doing a digital transformation. It's going to take us one year, maybe two, and then we're done. No, it is something that is constantly improving that you constantly want to optimize. So you need to start with what are the, mo- the priorities and then you have, you have a launch of this. And then after that, you keep iterating and improving. It is way less scary. It also gives the customer much more control on the evolution of this transformation. As you say, it's quite a scary concept to some that this isn't really an option anymore, but the reality of the transformation isn't as scary as it sounds. So What advice would you give to brands who are on the cusp of a transformation of their own, or perhaps they've recognized that they need to undertake some form of transformation if they want to remain relevant, if they want to remain competitive? Where should they start? I would say involve your teams. Don't give the digital transformation to one department and say you run with this it's uh, i think that is it is a big mistake to do this we always put a lot of uh, emphasis on the importance to organize workshops where we invite all the key stakeholders from different departments to make sure that we really have a view and understanding of the business as a whole that's the only way that you can make sure that you will define the right roadmap. And we have seen in some cases, some of our clients who were not very excited about this idea of involving many people. And they were, initially, they just didn't want to do it. And they want to, you know, to to keep going with their envisioned solution. But along the process, at one point, they would, you know, I also seen many of them say, oh, actually, yeah, let's let's stop and let's review some of the things. Let, let's involve other people because they came to the realization that it was very important. Lynn, thank you so much for sharing your thoughts, your insights, your experience with us. Again, as with all of the podcasts in these series, such interesting points of view and really helpful information for people who are looking to embark on journeys like this or thinking about what they can do to get started. So thank you again for joining us. Thank you, it was a pleasure. You've been listening to the 25 Days of Transformation series from Valtech Cafe. If you enjoyed this podcast, then why not subscribe and keep up to date with all of the episodes in this series and a whole host of insights from the Valtech Cafe back catalogue. And if you'd like more information about what we do or to get in touch, why not visit us at valtech.com to find out the details. Until next time.
Thanks for listening. <laughs>